welcome. So today we're going to be looking at the cosmic weather, the astrological activations, and we're going to be speaking about the different archetypes that are activated by the transits. And so a lot of you are familiar, obviously being in our human design and gene key universe, you're familiar with the fact that it's not just the sun activating a certain gate in a certain zodiac sign in a certain house. There's also different planets that have different activations. So Mercury is going to be in a different gate and the moon is going to be in a different gate. And so we're going to be talking about these different activations that the gates that the planets are in and what the energy of those archetypes are and how they might impact and influence you. And also, I think we'll do a little bit of an intro of why you should be following the transits and how they impact your design and maybe how you can look at your chart to plug in some of these activations to see what energy you now have activated in you and maybe what centers came alive or whatnot. So if I would choose one word for today, I would choose leadership because the sun is in gate seven, which is the alpha or the leader, the collective logical leadership that discerns if the pattern works or not, and then improves the pattern and then kind of walks into the future with that pattern. So collective circuitry, understanding circuit. And then we just went into fifth line and the fifth line is the throat chakra and that kind of expression. And then in a moment, I'm going to show you in the wheel that there's also some aspects with the moon and mercury, which is how we feel and we think in air signs that create an energy of actually being able to express in a way that make, makes sense. We also have the channel of abstraction that was already there yesterday, which is seeing patterns again and being able to look at the past and making sense of it. So a day with a leadership where we can use the past in order to make sense in the now and not only make sense, but also express and possibly that connection with the seven in the G kind of up to the throat also makes us be able to express as the true self as opposed to something else so let's just see you know that's something in the astrological weather but like where does that come from so what I was mentioning was the 7.5 where the sun is and I was saying that is Leo and fifth line so double leadership in that sense if you are new to the wheel the houses depend on where you are in the world so we could say if we are in the place where we are created this chart for which is UTC so if we are somewhere around the UK, it, the houses would actually be right for us to look at. But since we're all in different places in the world, the houses, we don't really look at them. We look at the signs and the planets. So for all of us, the sun is in Leo in gate seven. That's for all of us. And then I was saying that we have some of those, some of those qualities that have to do with kind of sense making so we have mutable earth and virgo that kind of is has that way of organizing and making sense and then we have the moon who just went from taurus where it's feeling a lot into gemini gemini where it can make sense it can analyze it can communicate and all that so we are going to have the moon for the next two and a half days in gemini so it's a way of expressing that leadership possibly and after after gate seven, we are going to have now the sun and Venus meeting. Venus is going retrograde, but she's still going to be in gate four, I believe, when the sun moves in there. So next week, there's definitely going to be this feeling into how we can have a deeper understanding, better communication with the other, even forgiveness possibly, and our values in relationships with the other. So sun and Venus creating that illumination around the four. But that's not now, so maybe let's stay here now. And then I was also just mentioning the channel of abstraction, that is that ability to see patterns and make sense of patterns in the past. Yeah, awesome. So all this energy and the themes that are associated with this energy, or we can call them archetypes, are available for you during this transit at this time. And so if you were to pull up your chart and look at your chart, and then you were to see, you know, what different gates are activated, you can almost fill in the spots in your chart. So say, for example, you have gate 43 and gate 43, it's harmonic gate is the 23. We're going to see that the 23 is activated right now, actually activated by Uranus. And so it's going to give you this whole channel. And this is that genius to freak channel. 
And so there's going to be energy that's going to be able to be available for you from the ajna to the throat, to the expression center. So the 23 is simplifying those insights, those epiphanies that you're coming, those downloads, those drop-ins. And the 23 is taking it and it's translating it. And so that's what is available for you now. And if you just had the 43, then now, and you have an open throat, now you're going to have a defined throat because they're transit. So as you're looking at the things that are activated, you can see, is anything bridging to create a whole channel? And am I now having access to a center that was once open that is now defined? And in that, you're going to feel a different flavor and influence. For example, if you had your, if you have the 35 and the 36 is activated, you're going to now have a defined emotional center. And so that is going to bring up this consistent fixed, like me feeling of emotional emotionality coming through you because it's defined for you and it's going to be your experience. It's not through an interaction with another person. It's that you now are getting access to express the emotions to the throat, to have a different adventure, to, to be able to experience like a new emotion, a new storm, a new opportunity, something different to move through. So we're utilizing these transits as a way to understand like what tools and resources are available to us. And so experiencing transit weather is different than experiencing like an interaction with another person. Because for example, if I'm interacting with Bella's 62 and I have the 17, Bella's going to emanate and exude the 62 differently than other people are going to because she has her own personality and the way that she brings through the 62. And so when I link up with Bella's 62, it'll be a different experience than me linking up with someone else's 62. And so when it, when a transit comes through, there's a different kind of flavor and it is going to just sync up the way that you need in that moment. Anyways, it doesn't necessarily have a preference when it's coming through the transits too. So I'd say as you are getting to know how to walk the transits, the first place to start is usually the sun because it's the simplest and it's the most impactful. So as we're in the alpha archetype, that is what the sun, the gate that the sun is in is the alpha. So this is the energy of leadership and facilitation and influence. And so you can get to know this alpha archetype through the transit. And because it's almost like it's coming through you too. It's not just that other people are going to be exuding it because maybe they have that definition like Bella has this in her purpose sphere. But now I'm going to be experiencing the 7.5 that I don't generally have in my chart. And what is showing up for me in terms of leadership and influence and facilitation and being the power behind the throne? And what does it mean to come into this level of leadership or be assigned as a leader for me during this transit? So looking at those themes as you are experiencing the alpha and also looking forward to the philosopher or the fourth gate that we're going to be approaching as we conclude this transit that Bella was speaking about and the conjunction that we're going to have between Venus and the sun. It's going to be illuminating and amplifying some of those Venus values as well and opportunities for forgiveness and understanding as well and knowing that each person is unique and different and they're going to value different things than you. And so having these opportunities to have conversations around what it is you value, what it is they value and how you can come together and how you can also ultimately forgive people for maybe how they treated you, you know, because they have their own experience of you and their own choices and their actions, you know, usually are generated from what they value and what's important to them. So not making it about you and allowing this forgiveness to come in too. And another thing, just for educational purposes, when you look at the list, like Ashley said, we usually look at the sun more than anything. So sun and earth and nodes are going to be on the top. And they, but what after that, you're going to start with the moon and you're going to see in order what is in transit the longest. So for example, the moon is changing twice, like every 76 minutes is changing lines. So it's going to change twice a day, you could say. Uh, and overnight, of course, the same thing. But then when we go down here, for example, like Ashley was saying, oh, if you have the 35 and now the 36 is defined, you're going to have the energy of that whole channel. So, so think about if you have the 35 and you have an undefined emotional center, Neptune has been here for years now. <laughs> I remember 
May last year when I was in Sweden and I was looking at there was like some conjunction with Neptune in the 36th. Like that means that you've had that overlay of emotional energy yeah. linking up your 35 for years. So if you're here watching now, you have the 35 and you don't have a defined emotional center, just know. And Neptune is like, it's energy and it can veil things and be foggy, but it really wants us to go into acceptance. And here it's acceptance of the storm, one of the hardest gates. Like I always, every year feel that when the sun goes from 36 into 25, so from Pisces and then into Aries, I feel so much relief. So I can just... Think about how it would be to have this whole channel with 35, 36 for years if you don't have already a defined emotional center. So mm-hmm. just see that this is powerful. Those transits are powerful. It's always an overlay. It never changes your design. But like Ashley said, it's energy that's there. And depending on where it is, you know, starting with a moon that's very fast, going all the way to Pluto, that's very Mm-hmm. So it's going to be different amount of time. But for the sun, what we are doing every week is to have a call around the main archetype. And that changes every six days. And mm-hmm. what I was thinking for next Tuesday with a free call for everyone that's welcome. I feel like I want to speak about that conjunction with the sun and Venus and also tie it to core wound number five, because there is something very linked and valuable when we look at Jinky 4 and core wound fifth line so I think that's going to be a part of the call on Tuesday so all of you are welcome if you want to come to walking the wheel it's the free call that Ash and I are taking turns doing at 2 p.m eastern time every Tuesday yeah yeah so going and going back to Neptune and, and the 36 just to like highlight that again for everybody imagine that now you have this channel and you have access to the emotional realm. This is part of the abstract circuitry, and it's here to put you on journeys, adventures, initiations to help you mature and grow. And so with the 36 being activated for the collective, we're going to be experiencing collective storms and individual storms, and they'll come in different variations and frequencies. And for you, if something is coming up personally for you, it's to get those emotions to the throat. It's to be able to understand and experience that emotional realm and wave and what comes with going on a new adventure, whether it be a new relationship, a new job, the ending of something, whatever triggers emotional weather for you is for you. And so at the end of this, you have the unique ability with that abstract circuitry to look back and see and make sense of it. And right now we have the channel of abstraction, which is the abstract circuitry, 6447. You get to look back at all these journeys that you've made with the heroine and the storm, archetype 35 and 36. And then the artist and the alchemist are going to come together to put these puzzle pieces together. All right. I've had five big, impactful experiences in my life over the last couple of years. Let me put these is together and see like, what is the meaning behind this? And I think since we're moving into the four, we're going to be able to extract some understanding so we can understand why it is we went through what we went through. And so we can also extract the medicine here because we also have the 13. If you listen deeply enough to yourself, to the experience, to the other, there is something here for you. And we're going to keep repeating storms and cycles. The hurricane Hurricane chaos is going to keep coming into your life unless you learn from it. So the 36 is, 36 is going to keep delivering you the same texture of storm if you don't learn from it. It's going to be with a different person, with a different circumstance, situation, but the texture and flavor of this storm will remain the same until you learn from it. That's why it keeps coming because you hold the right kind of environment for that storm to flourish in. It's like, hey, I like that person. I'm be attracted to that person because they have the right ingredients. You know, they have a lo- this low pressure system is coming through and then we have high pressure. And then all of a sudden we've got some tornadoes. That's because you are a match for tornado season. Once you're not a match for tornado season anymore, you won't attract tornadoes. You won't attract hurricanes. So it's all about, can you deal with the wind? Can you deal with the heat? Can you deal with the pressure? Can you deal with it to weather the storm? Because uh, the rainbows on the other side are worth it. When we run away from the storms, we are ridding ourselves of that opportunity to grow, to mature, and to extract some of the medicine that life is trying to deliver us. 
just to go on a tangent with the 36 and the 6447, like there's a lot of opportunities for you to learn from these experiences. And that's what makes good leaders is that they've been through it, that they've integrated, that they've ingested it, that they know how to lead people into the battle that because they've been through it. They've done it. They've led themselves through it. Yeah. Yeah, and the energy we just went into because the profile, if we look at the gene keys right now, the profile is seven and 13 on the conscious side, and then we have 23 and 43 on the unconscious. So there can definitely be, if you have 23, 43, you might feel that energy, but also part of leadership is to know you know, who's going to judge just a genius and who's going to judge just a freak. That doesn't mean that you have to like speak from an open throat and adjust to what people want you to say. It more is where is it worth it to use your energy of manifestation? Because if nobody hears, it might fall flat. And really that seven, it's about collective leadership. So if you aren't, you know, recognized by the collective, you can't really create anything. So feeling this urge to speak and what you want to share in the next coming days and feel into, is it worth it or not? Because sometimes it's just not worth it to spend our energy somewhere if it can't be received, if nothing can be created from it. So that's a little bit of discernment. It's not speaking for the sake of speaking when we have the 47 in Virgo, when we have the moon in Gemini. It's actually speaking for kind of logical understanding and getting somewhere and getting across to the other. So that's something to think about now in the coming days. Yeah. So Belle and I are going to continue to come on and do these lives where we're going to share the transit weather for you. And hopefully over time, you're going to start to understand how it interacts with your own design and why sometimes certain transits are challenging for you and how you can utilize the energy to your advantage instead of rallying and pushing against it and trying to avoid it. Because I think that when we can surrender and accept the energies that are being delivered to us as a gift, we get to transform with them. And we get to grow and evolve. And I think that the biggest part of this all is when you're experiencing friction, when you're experiencing discord, when you're experiencing division and the need to push away what is the weather, the cosmic weather, that's your own division inside of yourself. You're like, I can't accept this archetype. I don't really like this archetype. It makes me uncomfortable. When you can just allow, accept and embrace the archetype that's in transit, you're able to come more into unity and harmony within yourself because nothing's really going to trigger you and upset you. And if it is, it's a gift. It's like, oh, there's another way that I'm not unified and in harmony within myself. It doesn't mean you have to accept unacceptable shadow behavior. No, <laughs> there, it just means that you recognize that energy signature and you're working your way into integrating it into your own being and expression. Because even like some of them are gonna be triggering for you but it's bringing you more and more into your wholeness and it helps with your relationships and relating. So any of those conversations and frictions you're experiencing in relationships, it's because those people carry a certain energy signature that is like just to what you are. And it's completely different. Can we accept the different? Can we accept the unique and then embrace our uniqueness? Yeah. And in exactly 24 hours, we do the foundation masterclass, which is very much about that. Can you face life, whatever comes to you, whether it's ugly or beautiful? Can you stand in your stability, your foundation, in your core, and know that every time you face something like that, you grow stronger. And it's like an inner strength, the tensile strength to be able to find a way, whatever comes your way. So if you want to learn about design Saturn and mm. some of the things of how to create inner and outer stability, and you know ground root into your foundation that's tomorrow that was a good connection especially with the tangent on the storm can you weather the hurricanes and the tornadoes and all they're for you resiliency will come your inner stability will grow your inner your ability to center yourself will expand and you'll just like yes i can i can do this whatever if, if you accept saturn both personality and design then it's your best teacher. And it's a whisper from the ancestors of what you're here to embody that they were already starting to have challenges with, but maybe they didn't get as far. Now you are the last of that whole lineage and you have the ability to do it. You're not just here for 30 years surviving. We have so much extra time and space now to actually embody those things. So the whisper of the ancestors and hearing the teacher instead of saying, oh, this is not fair. Why do I have to live through this? Like Ashley said, if it's there, it's for you. And it's a learning possibility. 
And so take the teacher for what the teacher is. <laughs> Yay. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.